So okay, we're recording. So we're planning the open source ecology site planning GIS workshop with Stefano and Marcin. Let's continue where we left off. So we're in a process of looking at the curriculum and looking at the uh, details to make this happen uh, in July, July 20. Uh, actually, currently we're looking at July 18th through the 22nd. Is that the current? Looks like 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, a five-day workshop. That's the tentative schedule. Okay, so what are your thoughts? Uh, well, first of all, I only have till 5.30 today because I have another meeting later on. Uh -huh. really sorry. Uh, 20 minutes, just 20 minutes? Yeah, I'm really okay. sorry. But okay. then we can, we can arrange very soon a, a, okay. a, a, another conversation very easily. Okay, let's um, let's go over perhaps the most important thing is the curriculum. Yeah, on, okay. on the, just for a word on the date. Uh -huh. uh, yep. Um, so we were saying about 20, the, the week of between the uh, 19 to the 24, something like this. Um, uh, the, the week before, there will be any, will be post feasible as well, like the 11th. Uh, on or yeah, time. no, we can't we can't do that date because we already have another workshop scheduled for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, We're building right. the the micro tractor and power cube at that that weekend and into the week. Oh. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, um, so I, I was uh, because I was not so familiar with the term uh, permaculture, but then I I was just looking at uh, different website and uh, information on that. And, and, uh, mm -hmm. To my understanding, the, there is a lot I, I, I could do. And I tried to um, uh, summarize some more specification of the curriculum in this uh, uh, PDF and Word file that I sent you. Uh -huh. Have you seen it? Have you? Yep. So I, I have that pulled up here, yep. So yeah. Um, Somebody that is really knows exactly what are the requirements to the, the, the basic information mm -hmm. for the decision making of the yeah. planning. Okay. And I have a, a better, clear idea of what is required. And I could uh, then provide the, the training uh, format. Yeah. So I already tried to stress out what I found uh, that are probably some basic layer that you will be happy to include. A GIS project for um, site plan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, so look at the day one through day five, the five day training permaculture.odt document? Yeah. Okay, so let's just take a look at that. So, day one, so we're starting with the technical tools for doing this. Uh, I was thinking yeah. the best thing is um, I think the technical tools are very important and maybe divided maybe like one or two days where we're capturing the real data for the what they call a baseline composite I don't know if you're familiar with the term but basically a layered map with all the different necessary properties namely the topography the water plan like if we want to build waterworks like ponds and dams and waterways to basically with the main design feature of allowing all the water from the site to be seeped in to basically be used so there's no runoff coming off the site so while preventing erosion that would be the the goal for us the the way we'd like to frame the planning just just for the overview picture here um, our requirement for the site is that on the 30 acres over the next 10 years we're looking at setting up a, a campus which is a school-like, university-like campus, basically a campus with 150 people. So that's our max population that we'd like to hold on the 30 acres as a community that can get all its resources, so all its energy, food, fuel, water, a lot of the materials from the site, and therefore design the site to accommodate that kind of a vision. So basically some cluster development, some housing, some workshop space, campus facilities, and the rest would be 
nature and agriculture habitat the so that's the kind of like the land use plan and the as far as the enabling features to that there's a lot of work that has to be done with with fertility generation and a plant out in terms of a perennial polyculture style where the best model is alley cropping or basically you have lines of trees and then then flat areas for pasture like grassland the area here was originally oak savanna type of habitat uh, between a prairie and oak savanna that was the original so we'd like to mimic that kind of an environment we'd like to plant out an, a good number of hazelnuts and chestnuts as a staple crop in the future but besides that in the tree lines plant a, a wide diversity of crop that are harvestable and then have the rest of it in pasture so for example something like rows of trees with 30 to 50 feet alleyways where we can have animals as well uh, that would be kind of a, a plan we'd want to go for and then waterworks and road roadways access roads as as needed so what i would see hap um, for the baseline composite we definitely have to have a few layers such as you've got the topography layer of course the boundaries topography for soils i think it would be important to map out a baseline for the amount of topsoil like just basically inches of topsoils to, to record a data basically a baseline data for how the fertility improves over time um, then look at there's maps for soil i'd like to have a geology like what what are the rocks underneath maybe the water table depth yep. uh, a number of layers wind sun features so each of these should probably go on a layer that we can turn on and off within a gis and that way we have a complete then of course there's going to be the the built environment features um, that will be decided by the natural topography as well mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, that's that's uh, clear. It looks like uh, I was understanding quite well those um, requirements, and I I did try to mm -hmm. stress out some of the things that GIS can provide for this um, object here. Yep. So let's see. Um, so so on day one we have intro to the the Linux GIS and QG, QGIS tools. Uh, yeah. So data manipulation, map editing, QGIS cloud, intro to site planning. Um, so what, mm -hmm. what a big introduction of what you, you need to include. How yeah. You, yeah. Um, Maybe we could try. So there's a well-known, um, one of the leaders in the field in the United States is John Motlock from Ball State University in Indiana who, who teaches courses in landscape architecture, basically site planning. Uh, maybe we could reach out to him. Hmm? What's the name, John? John Motlock, M O T. L O C H. Um, let me send a link to that. But here's a guy that uh, we do have some contact with. Let me see. <clears throat> so within a document. Um, Uh, can you see the document? Can you get into the ODT document? Oh, let me see. Let me sh if I see if I sh I actually I'm editing online. Let me share that with you. I, I could. Um, uh, well, I didn't edit it online. It was just a matter of. Yeah, I actually put it online. So now I just shared it with you. So look into your email, and you can get in there. All right. Yeah. Yeah. There's. Uh, so there's John Motlock that's definitely a leader in the field in the United States. He teaches landscape architecture. Um, there might be some other people that we can consider, but that's uh, it's a great guy to, to have. Um, so maybe if he's not available, we can look for other names. Uh-huh. But yeah, definitely a formal introduction to the overall site planning process from um, some some professional in that field would be great. Um, so day two, uh, on a field land meets GIS, data collection and input into GIS, mm -hmm. data acquisition, 
things like remote sensing. Now, in um, the, the remote sensing, can we try to actually bring some sensors that we can actually plug into the system so we can actually get hands-on hands experience? Well, what I'm thinking for this first course, it's like uh, I have downloaded and uh, created a small project here with the LiDAR data for your farm. Uh -huh. uh, I don't know, you probably have already done the same thing or, or not, I don't know. Uh, that, no, that, not in GIS. Huh? Not in GIS. I haven't used GIS yet. Okay, so that's what I—I I don't know if I can do share screening with this. But go ahead. Yeah, yeah you can yeah. definitely share the screen. So, um, uh, let me see if I is there any... Now, actually, the first thing we'd can share probably well just to let there's a button on the left hand side that yeah. says screen share. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, for the intro to the GIS and QGIS, um, is there a decent... So, w will we be working off OSGEO Live, the CD? That's a good start, I think, yeah. yeah. Okay, is there a clear tutorial on how to use OS OSGEO Live? Is that available? Um, we are going to look, because it's the first year we use that specific virtual machine. Normally, uh -huh. we used to our own virtual machines so but i'm sure that there are tutorial and a lot of stuff also okay so have a, uh, an overview before coming to uh, the, uh, the uh, project with uh, some you know basic uh, gis thing already have installed and played with yeah the, the so basically what i would need to do is make sure that we have an osc specific tutorial so that um yeah. if you can point me to the base base um well, I mean, I'll look at the OSGEO Live, and uh, I can see if I can just start using it. And then we probably want to write spe OSE-specific materials that that we can use. Mm -hmm. OSE-specific uh, well, tutorial. Well, if you succeeded to see my... Uh, I'm not seeing your screen yet. yet. Can you hit the screen share? Yeah, I did, but... Um... Uh, I'm just seeing your face, so something is not... Mm-hmm. Anyway, basically, I, I can I can that was already successful because it's a good start uh, mm -hmm. to have uh, the basic layer. The digital elevation model is one very important layer for you. Hold on, sir. So if in the first two days I I already. I could already, my idea was already prepare some layers and just show how we interact with the, with the data. Okay. Right, like you and then the, the, the third, fourth, and fifth layer, we will go through how to basically produce those data. Okay, sorry, I, I had to just run out for a second. So first, second layer is what? No, uh, one idea is, First today, as I mm -hmm. go to the and I develop more, is just to, as we say, in the first two days, just arrive in the end, there is a kind, kind of a crash design, an overview of what we could do for uh, uh, site design. Mm -hmm. The rest of the three days, it's a little bit more in detail how to actually create the layers. For, mm -hmm. Because finally, to do all, to include all this information, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's quite a... Um, work it's, uh, it requires a lot of skills and time okay if, if you see I didn't modify much from uh, what you have wrote, written day one and two I just uh, stress out for instance in data position it's about for instance download the leader digital elevation model download some climatic data and mm -hmm. get other baseline and auxiliary data as you say the road the current vegetation, mm -hmm. the original natural vegetation. I, I already assume there is a lot of uh, mm, a, a lot of uh, things in one FTP server that you it, it was on your slide, so I went to this FTP server and there are a lot of information that we can use. Then as you say, we, we could think if you want to use sensor, but I, I would 
I would probably use these five days just to focus on the GIS and using basically uh, data that are there. They're available and from the internet and... And, and then maybe we, we could develop more in a second uh, tutorial, in a second training we could develop about mm -hmm. you know, building also some data. So getting some sensor, eventually yeah. do some drone flights. So because there will be already a lot of things to do during this part. Okay. Um, can we do something like, um, if you have a number of people here, can we do something like basic soil sampling so basically the the depth of the topsoil like a map that yeah so basically we could we could um, uh, plan a stratified sampling mm -hmm. into your farm for then do some interpolation methods mm -hmm. and create a surface map of, of uh, topsoil organic content yeah something like that. yeah that would be pretty great i think maybe using like a I don't know if we might find a land cover type of your farm or some NDVI um, index and try to build a model for quantifying the top soil for, I don't know how many, how many soil uh, sample we can get. We well, if we have, you know, say we have 20, 30 people, I mean, we should spend, you know, spend one hour to walk from the bottom to the top of the land and just get you know, each person gets like 10 data points. So, you know, we could have like 300 data points or something. Yeah, that would be fantastic. So we can yeah. show how to build up a map. So that, that, that could be, that could be the, yeah, because uh, topsoil organic content is one of the, our now reference measure that we want yeah. to improve, that we want to work with. It's like the whole world is trying to do something with it. Yeah, definitely. And so that that could be a great exercise, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you said it, it was about 15 hectares, the overall uh, area. Yes, 30 15. acres. Mm -hmm. 30 acres yep. is 15 hectares. So it means that the group can spread uh, around and, um, and we can, yeah, you, we yep. can have a, a very representative uh, sample of whole farm yep fantastic that's that's very interesting um, because we I can do some kind of um, a creaking or um, data mining uh, and predictive models to use with with the digital elevation model or other data to then go from the point to the surface uh, uh, map mm-hmm yep and that would be very interesting so if that that could be yeah so if you see that the crash design it's it will be in my point of view in day two just having already even if it's limited with, but with some few input layers show how we can play with this layer understanding and planning yeah and doing yeah right. yeah definitely like you know we can have so let's see um that's on day three? Well, in day three, basically, I want to go back because um, um, if you see, I, I stress out some of the, the, the layers that I believe will be important. Like, we want to know, like, the microclimate. Are some areas that are more, um, mm -hmm. um, um, there is more froze, frozen um, mm -hmm. area, more warm, uh, so which the minimum and maximum temperature so if we have some plants that are more uh, cold resistant we will plant it according how do we get that because that would we would have to probably do sensing for there is there any microclimate data for this site well um, I mean we, we have we have um, uh, climatic data at, uh, I need to check but the, the important thing is to, to get the the, um, the idea but for instance, if we, we, we probably will have for sure like a climatic data over one kilometer square. But sure. with that one, we can assume that with the topography, more is exposed, it's more cold, and then there is like a, uh, some factors with the altitude or the exposition that will lead to this difference in temperature. Mm -hmm. So 
Um, here we have worked quite a lot on microclimate uh, modeling, and we could we could try to uh, replicate that. So if it's too see. difficult, that, that's why I'm saying this thing they can go very very uh, deep into the scientific uh, literature. Well, how how good but, are those models typically? Are they any decent, or you just really have to get the data at the end of the day? Just probe it and then get data. So, I mean, of course, the proof is going to be in the data, right? How do you have examples of how accurate your models have been for micro microclimate yeah, modeling? Yeah, send you some uh, scientific bibliography on these, and there are some. Uh, I have a, a colleague here working mm -hmm. specifically on these, and he's studying like basically uh, climate change impact at the microclimate. Okay. So, yeah. But let's say if it's not this the point, for instance, just the wind map, that will be yeah. re relevant, I believe. Right, so but a wind map. The dominant I mean, uh, wind yeah. direction and stuff like that. So yeah. I'm not sure. I, I, I mean, I know which are the algorithm and the, the tools available. Then I, I, sh I need to explore more what are the data available to use it as a. Mm hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, let's say, to my understanding, this is, in this, in this uh, context, it would be interesting to have some climate data, then everything is, that is from the digital elevation model, so it, get, it gives you the isoline, so the, the same altitude layers, the slope, the slope direction, and then all what is hydrological modeling that I have been working quite a lot during the years. So those models from a digital elevation model will tell you where the the water flows, how the mm -hmm. uh, are where are the um, area of water accumulation, uh, the direction, um, and all this is exactly what you probably need to decide where to plant your hedges, what type of uh, uh, water passing you want to develop, and uh, soil erosion. Um, uh, where it uh, occur, where are the risk area? So all these, there are uh, sets of algorithms that I already tried to, to read it down in the in the uh, in the document. The thing is that each one is quite complex, so um, I'm not sure how this is, this is one one part we need to discuss in these few days. Um, how how much we could uh, do from all of those topics that are there. Right. So, maybe so yeah, yeah. Off. So we want to take the the curriculum in detail and kind of focus on some things. And we basically have to determine how much detail we need to go yeah. on each to so get a little more specific on the on the timeline. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, just to, to let you know, I don't know if you understand uh, what I was trying to for instance, them to isoline, mm -hmm. you understand those things. Like from the digital elevation model, mm -hmm. you have a raster data, you have a you know you have a matrix of altitude. Mm -hmm. And the GIS is able to throw the isoline. So basically where the lines of equal altitude occur. So there will be areas of less uh, slope with the broader um, yeah. uh, surface and other with the uh, and then so maybe you want to decide Above those areas to plant trees and below the same, or you know, to shape the landscape, to do your decision according to this. Right, right, exactly. That's gonna. That's called in the permaculture world. That's called key line, key lines and uh, contours and key lines. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So just to let you know, in open source, we are very well seated because uh, basically quantum GIS can access all the algorithm from uh, the software called Grass. Mm -hmm. which is a very powerful uh, tool and has got uh, so many people in the open source community that have been working in those um, algorithms. Yeah, yeah. And algorithms for things like, things like what are some of the capacities you're referring to? Excuse me? Uh, what are some of the capacities of... For instance, the watershed, our watershed is a, is a big... Uh, modeling tool uh -huh. that you can ask, you can give the digital elevation model and she will draw where the water flows actually. Oh, so excellent. So Very nice. How many, basically in each cell, the amount of water or the amount of flows 
depends on how many cells oh, wow. above exist. Very nice, very nice. Okay, uh, that's really useful. As well, area of risk because uh, if there are ten cells with a very slow, uh, low slope, maybe above it's less dangerous than have uh, five cells. Excellent. If Excellent. No, this is great because I thought I would have to be calculating that by hand. Okay, great. Um, so, just to let you know, because I, I have been working on um, basically ecosystem service, the provision of floods mitigation. Oh, nice. So determining, uh, we have a database of historical floods and the risk in, in housing. So, we went to see in the landscape above what type of vegetation exists and where we should preserve or improve the vegetation as a mean to mitigate the blood risk uh, yeah. below. So can we get, can we get uh, when we do the soil sample, do you think we can get the soil, in soil uh, basically absorption rate? Well, if we have this, because if we have a layer that also tells us the um, uh, uh, um, hydric, hydric, uh, the retention capacity of the soil mm -hmm. that's another very interesting and one measure it's just the organic content because mm -hmm. the more the soil is rich in organic content the more normally it's permeable and has the capacity to hold the water yeah a very a very um, eroded and uh, not, not in, uh, um, thin soil <laughs> is susceptible to basically to, to close the water and to create risks. Yeah. Uh, are you familiar with the term field capacity? Yeah, biocapacity. Field capacity? Field Is the amount of soil mo moisture that the water can, that the soil can, can hold. Okay. Okay. We call the uh, other terms are used in soil science as uh, water retention capacity. Okay, house. okay, that's called water retention capacity, okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, I mean, uh, maybe in different... Uh, okay. uh, well, the, all those things I could be familiar. The, the yeah. problem is that... Um, different words. To, to make it work, I should produce all those things before to be sure that it works and how, you know, to create all the, the, ma the maps and the things okay. exactly. And then come there and explain you how I did, because I don't want to put myself in the things that I'm doing it while uh, conceiving, because maybe then we are stuck. There is always something, you know, uh, difficulties or the data format or whatever, and then we cannot show the, yeah. the student. So this this will require. Uh, so I'm I'm very motivated to come and and do this with you, but I I just need. Maybe I, I need to ask you a, a simplification of what I do, or, or what I can do in, in, in my time, and propose you more specifically, okay, I can do a, a, a water a hydrological model that tells you these, these type of parameters, and I give you like five, ten layers, and then we play with these ten layers. Mm -hmm. And then we might discuss more, okay, there are thousands of other things that we can do, but this is an ongoing project, right? It's just a star. Right. I think we should identify the key key layers and yeah. for me that would be soil organic matter, water absorption, yeah. water retention capacity, of course elevation, wind, temperature, soil map, geology map, hydrology map which is surface and subsurface water and plant cover. I mean basically some of these we can get data points off the internet, others, like for example, water absorption rate as a function of the soil samples, we can get that. So maybe get the water sam the sample of soil and maybe possibly measure, I mean, it would be great if, to, for us, the critical would be, okay, what's the absorption rate? How much can the soil hold? And how much organic matter do you have? So maybe those three points of information for- The water absorption rate? Yeah. The water absorption rate, so that means, you know, go out there with, you know, we can do a very basic experiment, like, you know, uncover, you know, just, just pour, pour water 
pour a gallon of water onto the soil and observe, you know, just get very basic, basic measurements. Um, so that's the, the absorption rate. The second one is what the soil can hold. So the water co retention capacity or field capacity, and then the humus in the soil. So those three items, soil organic matter. So basically the thickness of the topsoil layer. Uh, I was, yeah, I mean, for, for organic matter, I was just thinking, let's just measure the very baseline of where do we have topsoil? Because, I mean, there's some places where it's just like right down to clay, like right on the surface. So just getting the baseline of what what's the thickness, just basic thickness of topsoil layer. I don't even care about the percentage of humus. I mean, that maybe that we can get another time, maybe. Uh, uh, but just like these bulk, these rough properties that... Uh huh. Okay. As I say, the other thing, like the isoline, so the, those yeah. lines of equal, the, these yep. things, it's quite uh, straightforward to do it. And I believe yep. it's elevation topography. That's the. That, I mean, that's the number one thing. Elevation topography, and unfortunately, that leads us to the water that, that can be used with the algorithms to determine the water flows. Also de determined by the land land to the north of us and some to the west because that's where some water is going to also come from. There's yeah, a doing this, yeah. Just, well, as you said, we, we need to analyze a, a much broader yeah. area. Yeah. The water it does not stop <laughs> at, at the border of your farm, but right. if the higher hill we need to take into account. So it, it, it's not because there are different techniques. Either I use a different, more broad digital elevation model, and I analyze the overall area, and then uh -huh. I clip, and I, I gather a, mo yeah. a much higher resolution tiles of your um, of your farms that are needed. Mm -hmm. Or, yeah, that's because if not, I risk to have to uh, download a, a very many tiles and then do the job. But anyway, that there are, technically it's not so, you know, it's things that you, to, to take into account. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm really sorry because okay. of yeah, I thought that we I had an hour, no but problem. actually there was this other meeting coming up and I cannot. Uh, uh, okay, so regarding next meeting, what's what's free for you? Yeah, what, uh, was thinking on on uh, Friday. Saturday is not for you. Is not a uh, good moment, right? Or, or let's do it Friday. What about Friday? Friday is good. Yeah, or else is next Monday for me. Yeah, Friday. I think Friday. Let's do it because we we need to put this on a calendar quickly. Yeah, yeah because yeah. yeah. So we have a full. So it's May, June, July. Full two months of an announcement. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's talk about maybe let's refine the schedule on Friday. Just get more specific. Yeah. Uh, maybe like yeah. hour by hour schedule, yeah. assuming. I mean, we can assume f eight hour days, like nine to five, probably or something like that. So it's, you don't get overloaded. Uh, I think it's seven hour training plus, you know, uh, lunch and some mm -hmm. break. Yeah. Yep. Well, well, then it's up to you how you used to work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, that's I, a good I, idea. After, yeah, yeah. Well, because you in the, my morning, because in the morning I will, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a group, but in, uh, because you, you work around like this time, right? Day we met at my five o'clock, mm -hmm. so we can even do a little bit early if you if you're able. If not, what what time you prefer on Friday? Uh, would would eleven a.m. work for you? Which is I guess you're five, you're six hours away. Yeah, like today we met. Yeah, at same, five. same time. Okay, this okay. So I'll I'll put it down. Uh, great. Excellent. Um, this time it's a, a full hour. Okay. Even more Friday evening. And um, yeah, I was also talking with a, co a colleague that today he's he's based in uh, in California. Uh huh. And he might be willing to join or to help us. He also he's working for OpenStreetMap. Okay. Okay. Um, and the OpenStreetMap has got a humanitarian project, mm -hmm. uh, and they basically um, they it's called human, humanitarian data modeling, I think something like this. Okay. 
and they provide the data for like today they're working in Nepal. Mm -hmm. And he also have a, a small uh, company for drone uh, slides. Mm -hmm. They are mostly working with forest fire, uh, so mapping while there is forest fire, it's very hard to map uh -huh. while the fire is going on. So are the are the drones open source? Use open source software and hardware, or no, his his um, uh, business it's is not open source, but he's an open source guy. So he said yes, let's let's do that because he told me already there are a couple of open source projects which could be you know a, a great resource, and uh, and there is a software that could do the job. The job it is to fly with a drone mm -hmm. and have uh, uh, stereoscopic imagery, so the same image, visual image taken from two angles or multiple uh -huh. angles. And then the software basically uh, reproduce a, a very high definition digital elevation model. Is that LIDAR? Well, LIDAR, you, 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 it, it's, not, it, it's not LIDAR, it's, it's visible. Uh, uh, it's RGB, it's red, green and blue, it's visible, it's like a picture, so you mm -hmm. can take a camera. The same, uh, you basically you fly with a plane, mm -hmm. with the drone on your farm, and since you have different angles mm -hmm. from the same in place location, the software is able to re replicate the, the altitude. I see. Is, does open source software exist for doing that? Yes, but it's in is uh, at the beginning. He told me it's at the beginning of the development. So it's a little bit behind what exists as a proprietary software now. Okay. But he told me he, he believed in, in quick time, maybe in six months or less than that, the, the open source community will provide something very good. And he said, I mean, he was also ready to, to come basically now, but he said maybe for doing that, if, uh, if we do it in some months, it will be better. But the thing is like he can bring his own drone, take a camera, and we do that with open source. And then there is this project with open source drone that basically tells you how to construct your own drone. I think this one there are uh, a lot of uh, uh, possibilities. But let's say let's stay strict on our um, training here now. It's not the case, I think. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe if there is potential, he could come and meet together and see what we are doing, and then we could discuss together and organize. Do you have a link? Do you have a link to him? Yeah. Can yeah. You Cristiano Giovando, I, I, um, What's the resolution of the detailed height elevation maps from his uh, drone? Well, with the drone, it can be a centimeter thing. It's, hmm. it's really high, depends on what you... So it's, it's very... Uh, so let me see, where are you? So... Um, wow, that'll be. So that'll be good. this is. I, oh no, sorry. Those are. <laughs> I wrong. Send you the wrong link. This is like sensor uh, stuff. I, uh, let me see where is. my friend and uh, we used to be colleagues um, some years ago let's see him I have a link to him and his company but as I said his company is now on, on uh, it's called Terraplan Terrapan Labs Terrapan Labs That's the company. Yeah. That's the. That's his company. But basically, he he has a, a, a software for doing this job. But he also told me that now there is an open source project. I, I don't know that the link of that. For, um, wow, it would be nice to uh, nice to make friends with those guys and get them as advisors. That's yeah, um, yeah, yeah. very nice guy and uh, that's one. great. I mean, if, uh, if 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 you 
you don't uh, we do, you don't have a huge expenses for guesting us and he can fly to, for, with a cheap flight from California maybe it would be also nice to have him mm -hmm. and he can help a lot while doing this because he's, he's yeah. one of those was at the beginning with open street map so yeah to do this meetup group what's the What's, yeah. a, what's the advantage of LIDAR over this image analysis? Is there any advantage of, of LIDAR? Well, it's two complete different things. L uh, uh, LIDAR is a signal, it's not a name, it's not a... Uh, uh, this thing that I tell you is a visible image, so it's like a camera. LIDAR, uh, it's a signal that hits the ground, so you have a shape. If you hit uh, a tree, LiDAR will tell you where is the, the summit of the tree, what is the density at the top canopy, at the middle canopy, at the lower canopy, and uh -huh. there is the trunk, and then there is the soil, and it even goes a bit below the soil. So for each point of, of, of a LiDAR signal, you have this shape, and you can do a, a lot of things. Maybe you are just interested in the, the ground altitude, or what is existing at the top of the soil. So you can draw a thing of the house, the trees, and the rivers, and mm -hmm. completely different. Uh, uh, I'll try to explain it more. Yeah. I'm really sorry. I, okay. I, 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 no problem. Okay. So, yeah, I'll take a look at. Um, yeah. If you maybe can send me his email, let's see, is that on his LinkedIn there? Yeah. Not sure I got yeah. it in there. And uh, eventually on, on Friday, I will tell him if you, he wants to join the conversation. Please, yeah. Yeah, that's great. Excellent, excellent. But currently, he wouldn't use the open source software if he were to do the images, or would he be able to access that at this point? Well, to, to my understanding, now it's a bit early stage to do that. Okay. But, to the, well, let's see. Uh, Let's see, because it's early stage, because what we have now to do is a lot. We could use the leader data that is very good on your site mm -hmm. to start with. Mm -hmm. and then if you see, because I, I'm not sure, but the, the resolution of LiDAR that I uh, downloaded, it's, it's high. And it's like, uh, you probably have like a 50 centimeter or something like that. Okay. But be, before the requiring something more specific, you really need have a, a understood a lot and doing a lot of analysis and then you can say well i want to go more in deep understand more and so I would what year data. is that data from the lidar yeah that i downloaded yeah uh, I don't know. I don't okay know. yeah okay yeah i don't want to keep on, you on the, on the link from a website that you sent me somewhere okay. in your presentation there was a link on an ftp server to download and i just follow that I, I can I can resend you the link. So uh, I'll send you the email of Cristiano. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. And um, and uh, the 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 lidar data that I downloaded. Mm -hmm. And then we meet on Friday. Yep. Great. Great. Well, thank you, Stefano. This is great. Um, okay. So let's talk on Friday. Thank you for your time. Bye bye. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Bye-bye.